Hello and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to give you guys another Deep Rock Galactic guide and I'll tell you how to use the Driller. The Driller is a very maneuverable class and comes in second to the Scout. The Driller is designed to create pathways for the team, crowd control, and has a large array of firepower to deal with enemies. So to start off, each Driller will start off with a default weapon which is the CRSPR Flamethrower. The Flamethrower has a limited range but is very powerful. The flamethrower has bonus damage against spitballers and mecteras. Sticky flames are useful and make it great against large groups of swarms. When you shoot it at the ground, the flames will stay in that area for a while. The gear modifications I suggest for the flamethrower will be high pressure, so your flame can reach further, unfiltered fuel for increased damage, more fuel for increased ammo, Sticky flame duration, so your flames stick to surfaces longer. And targets explode, causing enemies to have a chance to explode when killed. The overclock I suggest for the flamethrower will be the unstable overclock face melter, which makes a very powerful weapon. It will increase damage, increase flow rate, at the cost of slower movement speed while shooting, and will have less ammo. The cryo gun is the second weapon for the driller, unlockable at level 10 via the weapon assignment. In my opinion, the cryo gun is stronger than the flamethrower for these reasons. The cryo gun is capable of freezing enemies for crowd control. Smaller enemies such as glyphids are easier to kill with your pickaxe when they are frozen. You have increased damage to frozen targets, which makes it useful against larger enemies such as Praetorians, Oppressors, and Dreadnoughts. Also enemies that can explode such as Exploders and Bulk Detonators will not explode when frozen. The gear modifications I suggest for the cryo gun will be stronger cooling unit to freeze things faster, overclock ejection turbine for increased range, improved pump for faster pressure refill, hard mixture for increased damage, and cold radiance for any enemy that strays within 5 meters of you when firing will start to freeze. The overclock that I suggest for the cryo gun will be improved thermal efficiency for increased ammo and you can shoot longer before needing to repressurize. The next overclock I suggest would be the unstable overclock ice storm for a significant damage boost at the cost of less ammo, significant loss to freezing power, and significant loss to chamber pressure. The first secondary for every driller will be the Subata 120. It is a decent firearm with good accuracy and a large ammo pool. However, the firearm will lack in later game as it won't pack as hard of a punch against the enemies. The main purpose of this firearm is to deal with enemies outside of the flamethrower or the cryo gun's reach, such as mecteras or shooting things off of the ceiling like gunk seeds. The gear modifications I suggest for the Subata 120 will be high capacity magazine for increased magazine size, Expanded ammo bags for increased ammo. Improved propellant for increased damage. Hollow point bullets for increased damage to weak points. And volatile bullets for in increased heat damage. The second sidearm you get for the driller is the Experimental Plasma Charger or EPC. The EPC has many uses, but I'll get into those later. The EPC is fairly strong for a secondary and has two firing modes. The first is a plasma ball that can be fired in rapid succession, and the second is a charged shot that will shoot at a large ball of plasma. When the large ball of plasma is shot, it will explode. The gear modifications I suggest for the EPC will be larger battery for increased ammo, expanded plasma splash for increased radius on projectile charge explosion, Crystal capacitors to shoot a charge shot much faster. Heat shield for reduced overheating. Thin containment field for less energy needed to create charged shots. The first overclock I suggest for the EPC would be heat pipe as it takes less ammo on charge shot, has a faster charge rate at the cost of normal shots generating more heat. The second overclock I suggest is magnetic cooling unit, which has slightly faster cooling and slower heat buildup when fully charged. The first gadget in the driller's toolbox is the satchel charge. The gear modifications I suggest for this will be bigger charge for increased blast area, 
skill switch so you can grab the satchel, extra satchel charge for more ammo, and rock mover for increased blast area. The next gadget for the driller is the reinforced power drills. The gear modifications I suggest for this will be hardened tips for faster drilling, magnetic refrigeration for increased cooling, supercharged motor for increased drilling, and increased tank pressure to carry more fuel. The armor gear modifications I use, I use for each dwarf. The first one will be improved generator for faster shield regen, Overcharger, so your shield can absorb more damage. Temperature insulation for fire resistance. And static discharge, so when your shield breaks, you can electrocute other enemies. The first grenade for the driller is the impact axe. The impact axe is simple and you just throw it. It's a throwable axe. The carry amount is 8, with a damage of 160, area damage of 80, and effect radius of 1.4. This grenade is very useful to throw at frozen enemies as it deals a lot of damage. In almost every case, you can kill a frozen Praetorian with one axe throw. The second grenade the driller will get is the HE grenade, and it's just a standard grenade. You throw it, and it'll blow up eventually. The carry amount is 4, with an area damage of 130, an effect radius of 4.3, and has armor breaking of 400%, as well as a fear factor. The last grenade the driller will have is a neurotoxin grenade. The neurotoxin, when thrown, will emit a gas that is highly flammable. The carry amount is 4, with an effect radius of 7.5, and a duration of 10. You need to be careful when throwing this around friendlies, as it will hurt them and deal a lot of damage. It is quite a fun grenade to use, as it causes a big explosive effect and is actually quite strong. So the main thing to remember when playing driller is drill pathways for your team, drill to the drop pod, and just use your arsenal to be more efficient at mining. Also, don't forget that you can use a satchel charge as a mining tool, just don't be a silly goose like me and blow yourself up like I did here. One thing to keep in mind is when using the cryo gun, Use it to freeze all of the enemies so that the rest of your team can just shoot them with ease. You may not be getting a lot of kills when playing with the cryo gun, depending on how you have it set up, but it will definitely benefit your team as it will make enemies easier to kill. And quite honestly, in my opinion, I believe the driller is way more maneuverable and flexible than even the scout as it can drill its own path anywhere. It might not be as quick as the scout, but honestly, the driller is very flexible. One thing I want to mention is using the EPC for mining. Now, the EPC is a fantastic tool for mining. If you don't have a scout or you don't have a good scout or an engineer and a scout not working together, the driller can do it all. The EPC, when doing it correctly, I mean, you'll mess up a lot, just make sure you practice, but you shoot the big orb and then you shoot the orb and cause it to explode therefore you can allow the particles that you're trying to mine to fall all right guys there you have it a down and dirty quick and easy guide on how to use the driller so get in there start mining drill to your pathways to the drop pod to the helmets and remember guys we do this for carl please like and subscribe